Welcome back, ladies and gents, to Setup Wars episode 364, the show where I submit your setups to get featured on the channel. If you guys want to participate for a future episode, make sure to watch the video link down below. I hope everyone had a fantastic 4th of July, but nonetheless, it is time to show you five banger setups. So sit back and relax. Let's get started. Microsoft just dropped a bombshell. Windows 10 is reaching its end of life. No more updates, no more security patches. Don't panic, okay? If you need a solid blowware-free Windows 10 that lasts for years, LTSC 2021 Enterprise is the answer. At VIP or CDKey.com, you can grab your genuine Windows 10 LTSC 2021 key today. And here's why all IT pros love it. 10 plus years of updates, no Candy Crush ads, no forced edge and teams installs, zero disruptive feature updates, and you get a legit license with full security and enterprise grade stability. And it's only $11 after printing in the discount code TS20 and hitting the apply button. And here's how to install it after you purchase the key. Download the ISO from the official archive, use Rufus to create a bootable USB drive, then plug the drive into your PC and install the OS. After the installation is complete, just go into the activation settings and activate it using the VIP or CD key license and you're good to go. Right off the bat, we have a Dragon Ball theme setup, which is pure beauty to my eyes. It belongs to Alex, a part-time content creator from Cali, who put it together within a year for creating and consuming content. The space is bright and predominantly white, lit by RGB everywhere. The main battle station, a console set up to the left, and what looks like a small closet on the right that he repurposed to store all of his extra peripherals and collectibles. The main setup runs two displays. We got a massive 49 inch gigabyte ultra wide as the primary and an 18.5 inch portable monitor below as a secondary. Although the ultra wide is mounted to the desk, Alex still added a relatively big monitor riser which both frames the setup and free space underneath it for extra gear while also elevating his Edifier QR65 speakers to ear level. So the riser here is actually very functional. The peripherals of choice are a custom Nufi Halo with Raspberry switches, a Razer Basilisk V3 Pro mouse, and a Magic trackpad that you can see on the left. This combo already hints what sort of setup Alex is rocking here. With all the RGB lights, you'd first think about a gaming setup with a crazy custom PC, but this workstation is actually powered by a Mac Studio and an M4 Mac Mini. However, Alex does plan to build a PC one day, but for now, he handles gaming on a PS5. Cable management is rock solid. Multiple cable clips run the wires flush to the desk, and the most of the slack is tucked inside the cable rack. He also mounted his Mac Studio and Volt audio interface beneath the surface for convenience and easy access to their front IOs. Very smart. The progress you've made with your setup just over one year is remarkable. I'm obviously biased given that I'm a huge Dragon Ball fan, but I think everyone will agree that you've built a great setup here. I'll look forward to your next submission once the PC is built. Uh, good luck on your YouTube channel, and for those that want to check him out, I'll drop a link to it down below. For the second Setup Wars episode in a row, we have another triple ultra-wide monitor setup. This one is owned by Jeff. My name is Jeff. A fleet safety manager from Wisconsin, and he uses it primarily for work and gaming. It took him a little over a year and about 12 grand to create this wood paneled bunker of productivity with some rustic charms. All three displays are 45 inch LG Ultra Gear panels, each mounted to the wall on heavy duty mounts. That much screen real estate is more than enough for his daily work, 
his gaming needs, and to watch over Gotham. Since they are all curved displays, the corner setup was the perfect choice for this. The left and center monitors wrap around him in landscape mode, while the right hand unit stands tall in vertical mode. I still can't imagine looking that high up for something, but I assume it's for, you know, miscellaneous programs, large data sheets, or even doom scrolling on TikTok. Jeff is rocking a full set of Corsair peripherals. We got a K100 wireless keyboard and a dark core RGB mouse on a Corsair mouse pad. Plus we got a pair of wireless Virtuoso cans hanging off the side of the desk. On the left, he sometimes docks a Dell work laptop. So there's also a separate Microsoft Arc mouse and a mouse pad printed with all the Windows keyboard shortcuts. The cable work he did around the corner is super tidy. He drilled several holes in the desk and ran nearly everything through zippered sleeves, which makes bundling the cables a lot easier. This goes for both the cables behind the monitors as well as the ones underneath the desk. The one visible bundle runs up the corner from behind the monitors towards the ceiling. Those are the modem and router lines and the black sleeve almost acts like a wall divider and doesn't feel too out of place. The rig powering all those pixels is nothing short of a beast with the i9 14900K, an MSI Arctix 4090 and 96 gigs of RAM. Damn! The wiring inside the case could use a bit of love and I'd recommend getting a set of sleeve cable extensions to clean up the look, but that's purely cosmetic. To the right of the PC, he's built a small hub with grow lights for plants, consoles and drone storage below them and a wall mounted display with footage from the outside that acts as a window since the room has none. Embracing peak dad style, Jeff even has a smoking chair beside the rustic pipe tobacco shelves he built and packed with his family photos. I can already picture him dropping into that seat after a long day to wind down. Just overall great work around the room. Thank you so much Jeff for coming on the show. This next setup might quite possibly inspire some teens watching this video. So this one belongs to Nate, a 15 year old from Pennsylvania who over the last three years saved up money from chores and random jobs around the neighborhood to build his own workstation. Man's been on the grind mowing down lawns and taking out trash bins every week for some moolah. I better not hear any other teen complaining about not having money. If you put in the work, the results will show. This is yet another super young subscriber who started his setup journey at just 12. You love to see it. The foundation is the good old IKEA combo. We got a solid joint countertop resting on two Alex drawers that support most of the setup's weight. And I've said this in the past and I'll say it again, white pairs beautifully with lighter wood tones, whereas black does well with darker tones. So it definitely looks like Nate knows what he's doing here. Looks like we got two stacked displays mounted to the desk, a 34 inch Acer Ultralight up top and an old Dell panel below it. I don't know whether this was intentional, but due to the sizes of the monitors, the Pebble speakers tuck perfectly beneath the ultralight edges if you look at the setup directly from the front. Great touch. On the desk, you'll find a GMK67 keyboard and a Dragonfly R1 Pro mouse resting on a Dragon mouse pad. Otherwise, it's minimal. Just a few fake plants and a lamp on the left. The microphone is tucked on a boom arm behind the monitors while his Arctis 7P pluses are hanging underneath the desk. Speaking of underneath the desk, it looks like someone took cable management seriously. There are no wires in sight and most of them are hidden behind the Alex drawers and are run through white raceways. Excellent work. The self black PC in the corner is a budget build inside a Montec case running an i5 12400F paired with a GTX 1650. Overall, it's a cozy corner. Personality shines through thanks to the letter N on the top shelf, the framed Star Wars prints and the pegboard with the Govi glide bars, which are framing the monitors nicely. Interesting choice with that uh, skirt board or crown molding a third of the way down from the ceiling. I'm definitely curious about the design choice there, so feel free to enlighten us in the comments section. Thanks so much for sending this in, Nate, and I am so sorry about your server ban. Keeping the light theme going is Tarun, the youngest contestant in this episode, clocking in all the way from the UK. At just 13, he has a corner set up that most adults would be jealous of. The space is split into two zones. We have a main desk for everything from gaming to schoolwork and a console station on the left. Both are built on the classic IKEA combo with the two Alex drawers and a pair of white tabletops and a Dale's legs for support. Both sides run AOC displays. We don't really know much about the specs, but the PC setup has a stacked layout. 
We have a 27 inch as the main and a 25 inch as an overhead, both clocking 165 hertz refresh rate, while the console setup sports a 32 inch 250 hertz monitor for the PS5. My first thought was to swap the 32 inch over to the PC because after all the PS5 maxes out at 120 hertz, but if you sit further back for the console gaming then you know the choice does make sense. Plus maybe the 32 inch monitor has a lower resolution, I can't really tell unfortunately. Of course there's only one set of peripherals as the other setup is only a console one. He's rocking a Drunk Deer A75, a brand I've never heard of but also want to know more of. We also got a Logitech G Pro Superlight. While there are some black accents in the setup, I think a predominantly white keyboard might pop a bit more for the overall look. That aside though, audio is serious business here. Tarun runs two separate pairs of Pioneer speakers, one set for each station including two separate headsets. Pioneer DJ headphones and the Sony Pulse 3D for the PS5. When it comes to cable management, majority of the wires were taken care of. Everything's tucked or routed cleanly, though a few wires hang beneath the desk and they are visible even from eye level. A couple of cable clips or magnetic ties would bundle those up and finish the look. From this angle, you can also see the two tabletops join. The right side is fully supported by the Alex drawers and two Adil's legs, while the left rests on three points of contact and bolts to the right tabletop at the corner. Skipping a fourth leg does keep the area clear for your chair and moving around freely, but I would still be careful when putting a lot of force or weight towards the edge of the table since that is the current weakest point. Powering everything is a beast of a system with an i9-13900K and a Gigabyte Aero RTX 4090 GPU. Damn! Once again, I have to say it, at only 13, Tarun has a setup most of us would dream of. If we look at the finishing touches, there are wall shelves loaded with collectibles, gadget boxes, and some accent lighting too. I will take away some brownie points for the prime bottles though. I honestly don't understand how anyone could drink that poison. So I hope you kept them just for aesthetic purposes. Regardless, fantastic work my guy, thank you for coming on the show. Last but not least is Javier, a high school student from Kansas City and yet another white themed setup. It took him 4 years to bring this space together and you can track the evolution easily as core elements like the Xavier sign above the monitors and the two display stacked layouts have stayed constant. I'm not sure whether the sign refers to a YouTube channel or it's simply a design choice but it's a nice personal touch nonetheless. Like I said, he's running dual stack 1080p monitors, a Scepter Ultrawide as the main and a 24 inch Acer up top. There is a small gap between them and I assume that's because of the wall mounted arms, but since the Acer is tilted downward, the gap will be hardly noticeable from a seated position. Also props for skidding the bezels in white vinyl to keep the color scheme consistent. I couldn't be more proud. Below the monitors is where we will find his stream deck and audio mixer as well as a custom built GK61 keyboard and a Razer Viper Ultimate mouse, all of them resting on our original TechSource Topo white mouse pad. Speaking of mouse pads, the final setup of the month contest on our Discord server is TechSource mouse pads. So basically anyone who has a TechSource mouse pad can participate. The prize is a $300 Amazon gift card, plus a new TechSource mouse pad, and a ticket to the yearly setup of the year contest. So if you guys want to participate, join my server, which I will link below. The rest of the desk is clutter free. We just got a Lego Captain Rex helmet, his Fifine mic that he can tuck behind the monitors, and the PC on the right. It's a mostly Lin Lee build featuring an i7-10700K and an ROG Strix RTX 3090. I have no complaints with regards to cable management, it looks like he hid them all behind the cable racks and ran them through the raceways. So both the underside of the desk and the backs of the Alex drawers look neat and tidy. Taking a step back, we can see Xavier's interest throughout the setup. There's of course more Star Wars figurines, a lightsaber, an illuminated corner of Transformers and Dragon Ball collectibles. Great work Xavier and thank you for sharing this with us. That pretty much wraps up episode 364 boys and girls. As always let me know in the comment section which of these setups was your absolute favorite. And before you go don't forget that this month's final setup of the month contest features TechSource mousepad. So if you own a TechSource mousepad you can participate for some awesome prizes. Link to my discord down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you very soon in the next one.